All right, so let's take a look at this rhythm track. Now, this is a lot of fun to play, and uh, it's very inspired by CCR and uh, John Fogarty's solo career stuff. But a lot of what he plays, and I've noticed this as I was trying to come up with a rhythm, is very focused around just a dominant seven chord. Now, whether it be an E7, an A7, but you hear that seven sound in songs like... You know, it's just very dominant. It just really sticks out. And so I thought as I'm coming up with this rhythm track, I got to do something in that vein. You know, Old Man Down the Road or, you know, some of those classic seventh sounding riffs. So what I came up with was... So you got uh, the rhythm thing, which we'll go through the... I'll go through the rhythm part, uh, or the, sorry, the strum part, and then this little part that the bass actually lines up with each time too so when you're practicing that with a jam track it makes it even more fun to kind of hear the bass doubling up what you're doing um, okay so it starts with a downstroke on the one string now by the way my left hand I'm making an E7 chord so just make an E chord shape and then add your pinky there on the third fret second string to make an E7 chord and hold that down and now what we're gonna do with the right hand goes uh, downstroke on the sixth string and then we're going to play all six strings, or I think in the tab I might have had strings five through two, I don't remember, but it's just, you're hitting that E7 chord. Now, here's the thing. Watch my right hand. This is the trick to it. Keeping that in motion. You're playing drums. It's just kind of an accent. It's like down, up, down, or not, there's no ups. It's all downs. It's just down, 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 down. But you can hear how I'm accenting the one. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. So practice that, and that because that stays in motion as I go through this. Watch this. So after I do the little bursts, I'm going to release the tension here, keep my fingers in place, but you can see it's muted so that I can hit two mutes, two strum, uh, muted strums. There's another little burst. There's another muted strum, and then... We're going to do a down, up, down. So I know that's a lot. You can get this in the tab. I've put this in the tab as well, but it's... And then there's two more muted strums. And then I play the lick. And what I'm doing there, the way that I do this, I find it easiest to just go ahead and keep these two fingers since they're part of the E chord anyway. So that's on the second fret, strings five and four, middle finger and ring finger. Do the hammer on to the fifth fret. So you play the open and do the hammer on there. And then I just go ahead and lift both fingers again. And then I hit the open fourth string and I hammer both fingers down. So I'm hammering both fingers down both times. That makes it easier for me then trying to pinpoint the one and then go into that E7 chord. Since those fingers are going to be part of that chord anyway, I just let both fingers do the hammering. So, back to, from the beginning. We start with that downstroke on the low E string. And then it repeats. Now we go to the B7. Now notice the little walk up changed, but the strum pattern stays the same over the, all these chords. So let me, let's look at that walk up. Second fret, fifth string, open fifth string, first fret, and then back to the second fret. Now I do that, start it with my middle finger there. And then make sure that I conclude that with my middle finger so that I can play that chord. And then I go right back to that first leg. And we do it again. Now this time, I'm going to play the fifth string because we're going to the A chord. So I'm playing an A7. Just barring the first four strings there on the second fret, and then I use my ring finger on the third fret, first string. Now, the second half of that, so... 
I come up to the C chord. And that's just a very kind of CCR type chord change. I wish I could explain why. I, mean, I could get into theory, but I don't want to. It's just something they, they would do, and I think it was probably a John Fogarty influence. And so that's, the, even though the chords changed halfway, I, I went from the A to the C, I kept that same strum pattern through the whole thing. And then right back to that same little intro lead, or that same little uh, lead part over the E. And then we go to the B7. And then we're right back. And that's, that's the whole pattern, and then it loops from there. So just practice those strums. I mean, that's the thing, and, and it's all downstrokes, if, except for that one upstroke. There's the upstroke. So any of these rhythm things, where you've got a little rhythm and a little lead that breaks it up, is always fascinating to me. A lot of R&B players will do that. You can the song "Cream" by uh, or just the song "Cream," the song Sp "Strange Brew" by Cream. Uh, Clapton is doing something like that. I can't remember. I think it's like. Um, same kind of concept where you you play a little lead part and then you play the rhythm part. And so when you're in a trio like that, you got to fill the gaps. And so it makes you, uh, makes you a better guitar player. So I hope you've enjoyed this rhythm. Make sure you check out the tab. That's a great way to practice it. And then we'll see you next week.